So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou sow good seed in the field? Mm -hmm. For whence then hath it tares? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, okay, and uh, he said unto them, an enemy had done this. The servants uh, said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up mm -hmm. also the wheat. Mm -hmm. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, mm -hmm. gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather uh, the wheat into my barn. Mm -hmm. Is that Amen. it? Amen. That's mm -hmm. it. That last scripture there says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. Somebody say, get rid of them. But gather the wheat into the barn and keep them. And the Lord wants me to speak into your hearing today. Judgment is delayed. And for a subtopic, too much is at stake. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Too much is at stake. And so when we use this word, at stake, it relates to gambling. It is an idiom which refers to taking a risk or making a bet. Where you see the word stake, it is an amount of money, money that is bet. And so we've seen people and we know about all of the casinos and some of us visit the casinos and we see individuals gambling and they're betting their money because they're hoping that they would double their winnings or increase their winnings. And so sometimes what is at stake may be their house or their car. If they don't have no more money, somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> and so they take risk in hope of gaining and they take risk even though something may happen. They have what we call their high risk takers or high risk makers even in the face of knowing that something might be lost or something might be damaged if you are not successful. I need this fan off over here or turn some kind of way. So too much being at stake means that there is a lot to lose. And so in this particular scripture, we see that Jesus has given another parable to the people and he's been giving parables to them concerning the kingdom of God to bring understanding to them about the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God rather. And he begins to liken the kingdom of heaven to things that we are familiar with. And we know that parables are spoken because they relate to things that we are familiar with. And every time that Jesus spoke a parable, he would say, he who hath an ear, let him hear. Now, some people could not hear and some people could not comprehend. Some people could not get understanding because they had too much, what you call that, trash in their mind. And so oftentimes when you come to the Lord, you have to dispossess yourself of your preconceived ideas. Because when we try to work from our preconceived ideas or from our religion or from our denomination versus our experience, then we can get ourselves in trouble. We can be in confusion. So oftentimes Jesus would speak to them in parables and sometimes people would come and they would understand and sometimes I'm sure people left their scratch in their head. Like, what in the world did they say? And I was listening to a song the other day uh, that my son wrote, and he was saying, I in the worship, and I'm not sitting here or standing here staring. I understand thoroughly what I'm doing. You know, when worship hit the house, individuals that don't understand the kingdom and don't have that kind of relationship, all they can do is just stare and wonder, what in the world are these people doing? 
They're worshiping something what? I don't even see what they're worshiping, but it is we are worshiping and serving an invisible God. He's invisible, but he's visible, and we know that. The scripture tells us that because of the invisible things, the, even with the visible things, people should believe. But because they're so hard-hearted and hard-headed, they refuse and they want to go with the trend of the world now. There is no God. We want to be atheist. We want to say that Jesus did not exist. We know that he did. But one thing that we cannot say is that we have not experienced the power of God dwelling on the inside of us. And that is something that I cannot and will not ever deny. So that's the reason why we have to keep our testimony. It is as sure as everything else. The Lord abides on the inside of me. And I know when he planted his kingdom or a portion of his kingdom in my spirit. It was not something that I understood, but I learned later what had occurred. So Jesus gives them another parable about the kingdom to make sure that whoever is there, and this is all in one setting, he gave them multiple parables. And I believe this is about the third one. It was after the one, this is the second one after the seed. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And we know that oftentimes, and as we explained earlier, that you can sow good seed in your field and some of it is liable not to even grow up. Some of it is liable, somebody say, not to make it. We already learned that three quarters just may not make it. Amen. Those are the odds. And we've been saying that we have to make our calling and our election sure. We cannot take a chance or risk such a great salvation that has been given unto us. So that has already been understood. And we know that when anyone goes out and sows seed in a garden, his expectation is to enjoy the fruit of his labor. You mean to tell me I went out there and I dug this up, I tilled it, I watered it, I fertilized it, I planted the seeds, and then when it grows up some, amen, thief come over here and take my, uh, praise the Lord, all that I labored for. No, 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 no. I want to enjoy the fruit of my labor. And so after you've worked all night, all day, or wherever, whatever time you work, you need to rest. And it says that when <laughs> this man went to sleep, he went out there and sowed the seed and then he went to sleep and perhaps his servants went to sleep as well. While he was asleep, <laughs> an enemy or his enemy, it doesn't say an enemy, it says his enemy, snuck into his garden. Who does that sound like in the book of Genesis? Creeping into the garden to undermine or to sabotage, being crafty. And he comes in and he sows tears amongst the wheat and then walked away as if it was nothing. And so what we have to understand is that the enemy in his, his intention is to always undermine. There's so much undermining that is going on in the body of Christ. There's so much undermining that is going on in the world global. There's so much undermining. I, I saw someone trying to, to sell prayer for $14.99. 1499 but I, I'm not mad about that. It's not the person that's doing it. It's who's behind the person that is trying to change the value and the views that we believe in to make us hate the church, to bring us to a place where we are so sick and tired of phony that we just want to give up. So there's an undermining that is going on. And so this one went his way and, and no one seemed to know who it was. 
But we need to understand that the wicked or the enemy always has evil on their mind. Proverbs 4, 16, 17 says that they cannot even sleep. Yeah. Glory to God until they do something evil. They will not rest until they bring somebody down. They are evil and they are violent. That's what they eat and drink all day long, all night long. They have a criminal mind, always trying to get something by stealth or always trying to bring somebody down. And they do this, it is called a subversion. It is intended to weaken someone secretly or to make you less effective in a gradual way. That's how the enemy gets us. He gets us what? Little by little. When I had demons, Pastor Brown seemed to think I still got some, but when I had demons, before I had the demons cast out, the, the devil told the lady, she said, how did you get in that temple? And he spoke so blatantly and said, I got her little by little. That wasn't my spirit because I don't talk like that. I got her little by little. I didn't come upon her all of a sudden. I chewed at her. I, I sifted her. She didn't even know that her spirit was gone. Yeah, God. She had no clue that she was no longer in existence. So he got me little by little, but that's how the enemy works, little by little. He takes your confidence. He wants to take your power, and he wants you not to succeed. Underminers intend to cause ruin, and their whole focus is based on envy and jealousy. Satan envied the Lord because he said, I want to be like him. And his jealousy moved him to involve so many other people in his fiasco. He took one third of the angels. But praise be unto God that he couldn't get the other two thirds. You ought to praise God. He's already defeated. The fool that he is. <laughs> for there are more for us than there is against us. <laughs> So he wants to ruin our lives, yet he does not know what he has coming to him. So when the man was told that there were weeds in his garden, before he was told, it says that the, the blade was sprung up. So that meant that whatever that seed had to fight through, glory to God, it had fought through. It had become germinated. It had, remember, it has sunk its roots. There was no deformity in it. But it had to fight its way through in order for the blade to spring up. And we know that there are so many things that can happen when a blade springs up. It can be taken away. But this blade was strong. And this blade was so strong that it brought forth fruit and it birthed and it began to reproduce. And so when you look out there and you see your beautiful garden and you see all of the things that are growing up there. And then you take another look and one thing about these tares, they, they call it Donal. It's green grass. It's green weeds. And it has another fruit that it bears but it does not bear wheat or what we would say corn they look alike in the beginning stages of growth so you cannot tell the difference it's green everything's green hallelujah but then after they begin to grow then the wheat changes colors Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Who bless the name of God. 
The wheat changes colors. And so when the servants went out there this particular day, they discovered that some color changes have taken place. And we noticed that there are some weeds that are growing up with your wheat. And we know that when you go and shop for good seed, that you're not going to mix it with no bad seed. We know that. Glory to God. We know how you are. And so we wanted to come and let you know that now there's something growing in your garden that does not look like what you planted. Who oh, bless the name of God. But I love it because the service did not take immediate action like some of us do. We think we want to take matters into our own hand. And if it was me, I would have went out there crazy as a bull and started pulling stuff up. You ain't going to mess up my garden. Out of here. <laughs> Ooh. So they didn't take matters into their own hands. And you know that uh, they didn't take it upon their own self to deal with it. I mean, we, we've sent some people to deal with some things for us. And they ended up pulling up everything out of the church. You remember, Pastor. <laughs> We, we thought that we could, that you had some maturity and we thought that, that perhaps they were mature enough to deal with the situation and squash it, put the fire out. But they went and set a fire. God have mercy today. So they took it into their own hands, but these servants did not take it into their own hands because they knew that they had somebody else that they had to answer to. They did not do it without permission. And it's just like when we can uh, go and inspect something or are informed after the fact. I remember and even just this week I had Sister Shelley to come over and do my hair. I done some damage to that hair, didn't I? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Because I couldn't tell the, 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 uh, the, 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 the strong hair from the, from the weak hair. What I'm saying is that they had begun to, to dread and wrap around. Uh-huh, I was getting dreadlocks. And so Shelly had to come over and tenderly separate the dreadlocks from the, <laughs> from the new growth. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So I told her I was about to be competing with Bozo the Clown. <laughs> I pulled that out of my hair. It's all right now. But I was devastated when I, when I tipped my head down like that because somebody had damaged it with something that shouldn't have been there in the first place because they didn't know what they were doing. And so it is that if you go out and you see these two things growing together, if you're going to separate the wheats from whatever it is or the tares from whatever uh, produce you have, you have to be very careful that you are not pulling up that which is good. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because you will be devastated to see the end result. So... They came and they had the wisdom to inform the one who is duly vested in this garden. Said when they came and told him and he said, well, you know, and they, I know I can see them being so excited. Man, you can't, you can't, guess what the, somebody done come and did. I don't know what this is, what's going on. I'm so, what, you know, just ecstatic, just in a state of trauma. Like you, we went out there and we did all this labor and now all of a sudden it just coming to nothing. So now you might have to pay me to put it back in order. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. So I can see the, the, the householder going out to the field and inspecting it. And he identifies immediately who has done this. How many of you know who your enemy is? You don't even have to take no second guesses, glory to God, about who your enemy is. Bless that. You can be exact about your enemy. He was exact about the fact that it was his enemy. And we know that the word says our enemy, Satan, he is prowling to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. 
So we know our enemy. We know the enemy Satan, but we also know the people that Satan gets into. Well, and uses them. And so he pinpoints who the enemy is and he says, an enemy has done this. I'm not, it's not surprising to me. Sometimes you can see your enemy and you just go ahead because you got another thing coming. You have no idea that you have another thing coming because you don't have that much foresight because the Lord says, I will take that which belongs unto me and I will reveal it unto you. Just like Judas was sitting at the table with Jesus, Jesus was not remiss that that sucker, God forgive me, was sitting at that table with his mind all messed up. His mind was gone. Because he had eaten the fruit of deception to go and handle Jesus for us. <laughs> so the servant said, well, well, you know, since you know that your enemy, why don't you just, do you want us to, to gather them up? Do you want us to pull the weeds? And you know, I saw Jelana just start pulling, you know, just start pulling up the weeds. <laughs> and do you want us to, to do that? But see, this owner was not impulsive like us. Like us, we would have said, yeah, we're going to do something about it right now. And I'm going to put a security guard out here <laughs> with a shotgun to wait for him. They do that with those chicken coops when those animals be coming, you know, coming to eat up their chickens and whatnot. I'm going to stay up all night with this shotgun sitting right here. And I'm going to shoot him. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him out of his misery. I bet he don't do it again. <laughs> so, he's not impulsive. He does the right thing. And the reason why he does the right thing is because he knows eventually it will pay off. So, he uses his wisdom to deal with an ambiguous situation. He could have said, well, dig it up. Let's start over. But because he is more concerned about damaging the wheat, he says, nay, lest while you are trying to get rid of them, you root up the wheat also. So what we have to learn is how to attack an issue in the right way. And we need the wisdom of God when we're dealing with situations where we know that people are undermining us. And I go to the story about the woman, the two women who had a child during the time of famine. And things were so bad. And so they got together and they were so desperate, Deronda, that the one woman, they, they convinced one woman, well, we'll eat your baby today and then boil, boil and eat. Not, not just eat it, but we're going to boil it and eat it. And then tomorrow we're going to eat and boil and eat my baby. What kind of mess is that? You think you're going to walk up to me and deceive me like that? Somebody say bald face. But see, when you're desperate, you do some desperate things. And so she, they ate her baby that day. And then when the next day came, the lady that baby was alive went and he ate her baby. And so now the one that is childless goes to the king screaming, talking about, look what happened, look what happened, look what happened. One said, it's my baby. The other said, no, it's mine. He said, okay, bring me a sword. Let me cut the thing in half, and I'll tell you who the real mama is. Glory to God. We don't need no DNA test. So the Lord gives us a strategic things to do so that we will not prematurely bring damage to our life and so this is not a backup plan this is the plan so there is no need to take the risk because the Lord has a plan in place 
It's called predestination. It's called foreknowing. He foreknew the enemy was going to do what he did. And many people say, well, how come, how come the Lord just didn't, when Satan came into the garden and uh, the book of Genesis, how come he didn't deal with him? And the reason why he didn't deal with him is because he desired that we would have free will. The Lord says, I want your heart, not, not your mouth, because your mouth can say one thing and your heart can be a man somewhere else. You can say with your mouth, I love you, but then in your heart, you really don't love me. You ain't got no feelings for me. And so, as I said, when they fully grew up, it was postponed. And this is why many people are saying, well, where is the, the, the day of his coming? Why is he so slack concerning his promise? But it was postponed. And he said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye up first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather my wheat into the barn preserved and then he gives some more parables Jesus starts so they're thinking about this now they the Jesus just dropped it you know okay I'm drop that subject let me go to another one <laughs> and so then he begins to talk about the parable of the grain the mustard seed the grain of mustard seed which is the least of all seeds but when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs and it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches. So it starts off small and becomes what it is purposed to be. Glory to God. See, because if he would have interrupted the growth of the wheat prematurely, they had not yet reached the purpose or their potential. And I say unto you that God graces us all the days of our saved life. Because he knows the potential that is in us. Would to, to God, Satan would say, oh, you need to get rid of them right now. You need to just pull them up from where they are because they're no good for nothing. But God knows that there's something good in you. Glory to God. Because he placed it there. He placed it there for purpose. He didn't place it there to be used by the adversary. Somebody ought to shout, I know whose I am. And so the, the grain of seed has a great potential. Then he talks about the woman and the leaven and how we talked about the biscuits and how you put the yeast inside of it and how the yeast affects the, the meal and how it just begins to grow. And when you leave it in there at a certain point, you have to take that and you have to cut it in pieces because if you don't cut it in pieces, you might go and look in your stove and, and meet the bread coming out the, the stove. <laughs> It might have gotten too, too big. I'm talking about the kingdom of heaven. It's potential. And so he says to them, the reason why I talk to them like this is because I am opening up my mouth now to other things that have been kept secret. Hidden manna must be revealed. The mysteries of the kingdom which are not of this world, that pertain unto life, that pertain unto death, eternal damnation, and life itself. We often ask ourselves, what does forever mean? Because that is what is going on here. It is an eternal judgment going on here. So have you ever thought about forever? It'll blow your mind. Sit there just for a minute. Compared to the time that we have on this earth. When you think about forever, when you think about there is no time. So this is what he is speaking of. This is the secret that is being revealed to them. Forever is being revealed to them. But some of those that are sitting there do not realize that forever is being revealed. They're stuck at the gate. So their faces are puzzled uh, because some of them did not understand. 
And when he stops talking, he takes his disciples aside and they go into the house to rest. They left the multitude. And so when we need to know, and that's my next point about revelation, when we need to know, the Lord will show us how to read between the lines. And if we ask him, he will tell us. There are many that are not seeking the Lord. That's why the Lord said that we need to change the bread every day. Yesterday's bread is not going to be as potent as today's bread. Glory to God. So I'm not going to continue to talk about the same thing over and over and over and over again. And there is no revelation coming forth. Glory to God. Because the Lord is a revelator. When you look over in the book of Revelations, you will see so much about his revelation. But he knew that they knew that as he was speaking about all of these things, that there was more to it. And that is what the Lord loves about wheat because wheat knows how to seek it, uh, seek it further. When I go home like the Berean church, I'm going to get in the book and I'm going to see if what Sister Brown said was true. And I'm going to look in there and I guarantee you when you look in there, God will give you another revelation. He will blow your mind. So if you ask him, he will tell you. Paul said, let therefore as many as be perfect, complete, those that understand mentally about moral growth, be thus minded. Keep exercising your mind. <laughs> and if anything be otherwise minded, God will reveal it to you. If there is anything more, he will reveal it. How many of you have been in a place where you are afraid to ask the Lord a question? about something that you don't understand. <laughs> That's why he had to silence Job. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. He had to tell Job, look, you need to take a seat. And you need to be quiet. So I can tell you some things that you know not of. And so that's what happens when we sit and ask the Lord to help us to exercise our mind so that we can understand more about him. So they sent, Jesus sends the multitude away and went into the house. You know, I'm taking a break, I'm tired. And his disciples, and I must mention now that these disciples are future apostles. So Jesus knows who he's talking to. And he knows why he takes them to the side so that he can make sure that this impartation, hallelujah, is settled within them. You know, sometimes you can tell somebody something in passing, but then you have to take them to the side and say, no, now, now, wait a minute. Let me give you the, the reality of this. Let me give you the plain word. Let me, let me dissect this for you. Let me give you some thorough understanding because I don't want you to be walking around afterwards and saying, I don't have a clue what the Lord was saying to me. So they needed clarity on a particular situation. They were like little children, always questioning and always wondering and always ready to absorb. And they said to Jesus, they said, declare unto us, the parable of the tares of the field. We see and understand the good seed is going to survive. But give us more clarity on the parable of the tares of the field. And in my own imagination, I would say that I would say, how can you ignore what is going on? How can you just overlook all of the wickedness that is right here beside your wheat with the potential of taking your wheat out? How, how can you just stand by and just watch your children struggle in this world and go through trials and tribulations and, and pains and traumas? Hallelujah. How can you just 
watch them go through what they're going through in this wicked world. Jesus, you need to do something. Tell us you're going to do something. How can you ignore it? I love it because the Lord knows that if we lack wisdom, we can ask him. Because he generously gives it. And so he begins to explain and expound on the why. I can watch the things going on in this wicked world or in my garden that I planted. And there's no peace there. There's a lot going on there. First of all, he says the sower is the son of man. And when I looked up that, I said, you know what? The son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost because he is on a mission. And his mission is going to be fulfilled. And so the son of man was sent here to this earth to seek for the good seeds that are planted here already. Those that have borne fruit and those that have borne fruit worthy, somebody say, of repentance. Those that have said, God, I am sorry for the way that I've been living and I need to change my wicked ways because I am not of the wicked one. Don't you realize when you're not of the wicked one, the Lord is going to make a visitation to you. Hallelujah. Even as he did unto Saul and changed his name to Paul, he is going to make a visit unto you and transform your very life. You cannot stay in the state that you're in because the son of man is here searching for his children. There are two classes of people in this world. He says all souls belong to God though. And that he is the creator and the judge of all things. That's why he said judgment can be delayed even for those that are wicked. Because he says that the reason why he's being so patient is because he's in hoping that they repent. He's not willing that any man will perish, but that they would come to know him and their saving grace. That they would come to know him. So it's going to take a while. But growing up in this world, even though we're in it and not of it, look at your neighbor and say, it's not a threat to me. And neither is it a threat to him. He says the field is the world. It is the systems of Babylon. It is the way of this world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And these are the things that the children of the Lord, the kingdom, they overcome these things by the blood of the lamb. Somebody ought to shout, I'm more than a conqueror. <laughs> because I'm not going to allow the world to live in me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to allow what's growing up around me to get on the inside of me uh, so that's why when he looked at the field he was not worried he said the good seed are the children of the kingdom but the tares are the children of the wicked one point blank there's no middle ground there's no uh, I'm a good person no either you either you a good seed or you a bad seed Either, either, either you are of God or you are of the wicked one. There is no middle ground. This is how we look at it. Not, I mean, I used to get a bad habit too of looking at people and if they did something, you know, especially my children, I would say, Satan. <laughs> and they thought I was talking to them. <laughs> I wasn't talking to them. I was talking to that spirit that was in them. They took me wrong. <laughs> it only means that you're letting Satan use you. Satan is talking through you. Satan has got a hold of you. So we're in the world, but not of it. And what I was really saying, I really wish you would stop acting like that. Because if you're treating your mother like that, you look at book Ephesians chapter 6 or your parents your life can get cut short 
you mess, you're messing around, <laughs> your life can just get cut short for disrespecting your parents. And so I was saying that because I'm looking to spare your life. Because if you don't listen to the wisdom that I'm giving you, and you just listen to your mind and listen to Satan, no telling where you might end up. Am I right? So he told us that in this world we shall have trials and tribulations and tests. We're in it, but we're not of it. But while we are here, we're going to be challenged by the wicked one. Tears growing up right next to you which are going to challenge you in the word. They're going to challenge you in your identity. They're going to challenge you in the twisted scripture. They're going to challenge you in your lifestyle, wanting you to live an alternate lifestyle. But Jesus defeated that enemy in the wilderness and we must take on the same stance that he did. He constantly referred to the word. He constantly said, you know what? I'm already exercised in my mind in that area so you cannot deceive me. There are so many people that are not exercised in their mind about many things. And we call them babes. And that's why we got to watch out for the babes. But Jesus gave unto them and he was saying that, you know, when Satan came to him, he was just trying to talk him into giving up, trying to talk him into jumping off of something, trying to, to make him accept what he was trying to offer unto him. And after Jesus defeated him and said that Satan left him, listen, for a season. Look at your neighbor and say, when he leaves for a season, that means he's coming back. But in the meantime, the angels came and ministered to Jesus. So the wiles of the devil can be resisted. All of his tricks and all, all of his manipulations, all of the things that he has designed to appeal to us, to prompt us to respond to him. So again, what's growing up around us should not get in us. But there are times when it can get to us. But we must remember that we have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But he was tempted in all points like as we are yet. Oh God that part hurt my foot without sin. So we have somebody to look up to. And we have somebody to rely on. So while we are growing up, the Lord knows what our stature is and, and he knows what we're supposed to be aware of. He knows that we're supposed to be aware of the schemes of the adversary. So to overcome and to win over the enemy, we must outgrow and reject his offers. Come on and give God a praise. This is the only way that we're going to win over the enemy. Because Jesus, even that man in the scripture, could have said, well, you know what, uh, just pull it up. But the Lord did not choose to pull us up. The Bible says that we must submit ourselves to the Lord and the enemy will what? Flee from us. But when he comes back, look at your neighbor say, when he comes back, exercise your mind and be ready for him. And if, and if, and if he caused you to fail, Exercise your mind and be ready for him. I'm telling the truth here. So Jesus, how can you under how can you handle seeing what's going on in this world? It's, it's already been dealt with. There's an adjustment pending. God does not remiss, is not remiss of his enemy because he has a plan. In a plan. The wicked world is going to wax worse. But the end of time as we know it shall come. And when it comes he's going to command his angels to separate. Listen the good seed from the bad seed. God is not willing that any should perish. So he in his wisdom withholds his wrath. How long can you hold your anger in? Multiply that times all of the people in the world now, before, now, 
and the people to come. How long can you hold your wrath? Huh? Talk to me. Ten minutes. Some of us got anger. We need anger management. The Lord don't need no anger management. Because his wisdom reveals that he can stand and he can take it because he has a plan. He does not prematurely judge. The patience of the Lord prevents damage, listen, to his good seed. And the enemy does not have foresight. The Lord said, none that the father have given him has he lost. None. Not a one. So it doesn't matter if that tear or that wicked one or, or these wicked people are we are in the midst or they're in the midst of the wheat. We are the finest of wheat and we are the trees of righteousness. Glory to God. We will become that tree. So what has to be understood is that there is a determinate, deliberate counsel of God. Just like the enemy deliberately does things to us and does things to our life and try to trip us up even as Judas, as Judas was and he did not escape the judgment because he was ordained to do so. So whenever you look and you see that enemy just know that he was ordained to do so. It is the determinate counsel of God. Peter was preaching and he said, in so many words, Satan, the trick was on you. Glory to God. The determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God has taken place. And you by your wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he would listen, beholden of it. For the sake of the call, the Lord laid his life down and he raised it back up again. I say hell got sick because it could not handle the Holy One. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when he raised, he said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? The Lord knew that we would need a redeemer. He knew that we would need our sins forgiven. He knew that one day he would conform us, amen, into his image. So when you think about what God does, he says, I so loved this world that I can overlook fault and see need. I so love this world or I so, so love you that I can look past your fault and look past your infancy and I can look past your shortcomings and I can look past it. Hallelujah, because I have a plan in a plan. And don't think that Jesus didn't feel like giving up sometime. Don't think that he didn't feel that way. He could have wrapped it up. And that's what we do sometimes. When things are before us, Pastor, we have been in a place where we have said, let's wrap this mess up. Hallelujah. Because it's too much wickedness involved in it. Hallelujah. But for the grace of God, even as he told Oh, Peter, even as he told Paul, there is a thorn in my flesh and I'm so sick and I'm so tired. I wished I could just leave here. Oh, but the Lord said, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Oh, and then he said, well, if I'm going to get all these revelations, I'd rather glory in my infirmity. Hallelujah. I can't give up. So Jesus even felt like giving up when he was crying in the garden of Gethsemane over what was going on. What was going on in that garden? Jesus prayed for the father to take the cup from me. Hallelujah. 
But I believe that when Jesus got to that place of total surrender, the Lord had to make him see, Pastor. It's too much at stake. Hallelujah, you got to finish your course. Oh, bless the name of God. And I know there are some of us here that are crying in our gardens. And we're saying to God, I wish I could get on beyond this part. This part is doing something to me that makes me want to give up. This part is doing something to me that makes me not want to go on. This part is doing something to me that is making me ask myself is it worth it this part I know I got to face that oh glory to God but Lord if you don't strengthen me if you don't get a hold of me hallelujah I don't know what I might do you know the desires of my heart the cry in the garden but I could hear Jesus say, but I could hear the Father say, I gotta keep going because it's too much at stake. Yay, God. I gotta I think about my children. I think about my grandchildren. I think about my grandchildren's children. I think about their children and their children. I think about the lost in the world. I think about those that are roaming now. Hallelujah. And I got to shout to myself. It's too much at stake. Put those hands together. Too much at stake for me to give up. I know my garden is looking a mess. But it's too much at stake. Jesus, huh? They came and captured him in the garden. But before they did, he said, nevertheless, huh, thy will be done. Let it be. Because it's too much at stake. I, I, didn't, I didn't come to this earth. Glory to God to leave here. And my purpose is not fulfilled. Glory to God. Even as Moses said, even in the times when he could have had pleasure, he said, I'd rather suffer, hallelujah, with the people of God than to suffer, hallelujah, and to have pleasure, oh, glory to God, for a season, oh, glory to God. And sometimes we want to take a season, we want to take a sabbatical, and perhaps we might not come back but Jesus when they came and they captured him hallelujah in the garden he wanted to know why is all of this commotion why are you evil ones surrounding me hallelujah but I realize it is the determinate counsel of God have your way do what you want to do but just so that I can put you in check. If I can call my father, I can call him right now. And I can ask for, and he will send me 12 legions of angels. That's 72,000. Hallelujah, angels. Glory to God, and you cannot even overcome one. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I can call him if I want to and when people are doing things to you sometimes you say well I could do this and I could do that but I'm going to hallelujah retreat because my father hallelujah has called me to this for this cause he said came I and you can't keep me from doing it there's nothing you can say I've already settled it in the garden of Gethsemane. I already settled it before the foundations of this very world. Somebody shout, it's already settled. So they arrested Jesus, did what they did. 
Hallelujah. And sometimes he wouldn't say anything because too much was at stake. Have, have you ever caught yourself getting ready to say something? <laughs> or getting ready to do something and the Lord show you a picture of damage and it's too much at stake. Jesus walked to that up that Golgotha to it. They beat him with the whip. They slapped him. They spit on him. They pulled his hair. They mocked him. They stripped his clothes off. They nailed him and hung him. And said to him, hey, you said you was all that. Come down off of there. How come you can't save yourself? How come you don't do something? How come you're not trying to fly off of the cross? That's why the Lord said we got to bear our cross. Hallelujah to God. Because it's too much at stake. In your household, there's some things that you may want to do, but God said, wait, 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 wait. There's too much at stake. There's some things you might want to say, but wait, 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 wait. It's too much. Hey, my at stake. Because the Lord wants to give you the perfect strategy. Sometimes silence is golden. Hallelujah. Because it said that he was as a silent lamb. Helpless and hopeless. But that, it just looked like that. Somebody shout hallelujah. It just looked like that. It looked like he was by himself. It looked like he didn't have no strength. It looked like he didn't have a reason. It looked like he didn't have a care. It just looked like that. Rema Sebehe. But he knew that too much was at stake. You can't afford to drop everything now and leave it as is. As much as you want to fold up Pastor Brown and quit, consider this. It's too much at stake. you see way down the road somewhere the little mustard seed growing up we might not be here but it's happening glory to God hallelujah so you can't throw in a towel no matter how many people you see and I'm speaking to the ministers of the true gospel of Jesus Christ you can't afford to allow the false prophets and the apostles and the teachers to discourage you from doing what you need to do for the Lord, for reaching souls, for ministering to the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, they're making it look bad. Yes, they're growing all up in the wheat. Rema Sabohoya. But God knows the difference and he's going to make the adjustment. Come on and give him a praise. Don't waste your time trying to get rid of the false apostles or the false teachers or the false anything. That's why the Lord said that we should always be girded about with truth in our loins. Bless his holy name. You got to hold on to the truth. Let us rise. Hey God, come on, give him praise right there. We can't afford to act rashly or prematurely or be impulsive because it's too much at stake. And 
And I think about what's in the news now with quote unquote the royal family. But we know we are a royal priesthood. There's no minding of that. Because God's kingdom is not of this world. They even wanted him to overthrow the government then. <laughs> Jesus said, no, 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 no. I'm not here to overthrow no government. I'm here to fulfill the law of love. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to redeem my children. Glory to God. It's too much at stake for me to start twisting and shouting and swinging arms. <laughs> Getting into domestic violence and whatnot. But it was too much at stake. When you even look at that royal family, you wonder what in the world was going on. They act like they act because there's too much at stake. And yes, some of it may be wicked. Some of it may be good. But God said, I delay the judgment because too much is at stake. And oftentimes we should not judge the time so quickly. Judge not before the time. Because you might mess something up. You might permanently damage something. Rehash. God is ministering to somebody. I need you. The Lord is saying is to seek me for wisdom. On those things that are blended. I bless his name. We got a lot of things that are blended today. But God has to give us wisdom. On how to deal with it. Bless his name. Bless his name. God give me wisdom. To separate. Just like you did. Without damaging my life come on and give him a praise here oh God we glorify you come on worship him come on worship him God said I, I will tell you when and if I say glory to him. I will tell you how and I will tell you when Rema Sabahoy I will tell you because I the Lord know the beginning to the end and the end where to the beginning. I go before you and I make every crooked place straight so that by the time you get there you ain't tripping and by the time you get there you're not struggling and by the time you get there you're not reaching to see who can help you because I've already helped you. Come on and give them a praise. I know there's too much at stake. I know what you can lose but I also know what you can gain. When you wait on me and when you're patient to know that I the Lord am wisdom I the Lord am prudent <laughs> if you don't lean to your own understanding oh God I, I remember so many times and people would just mess up my garden I was like you know you're going to pay for it and you're going to pay for it now In my hindsight, if I would have just left it well enough alone, God had already worked it out. Come on and give God, save your energy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Save your anointing. And don't cast your pearls before swine because they're not listening to you anyhow. They don't understand you anyhow so right now all you need to do is just stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has set you free so that your mind hallelujah can be stayed on him the author and the finisher of your faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured every challenge that came to him and now he is set hallelujah at the right hand of the father with exceeding joy 
you're going to be able to enjoy the fruit of your labor. The devil is a liar. Just as sure as the fruit is birth, you will be able to enjoy the fruit of your labor. Now give God a praise here. Eternal glory. Enjoy it. Look at your neighbor and say, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Give God praise now. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Endure it. Because you go enjoy it. Don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. Don't, don't, don't get yourself all in a tizzy about it. Don't get yourself all worked up about it. God said, peace. Glory to God that passes all understanding. I know my God is going to give me wisdom, and I know it's already handled, and I know it's a plan and a plan. I know that my God would not forsake me. Hallelujah. I know that he would not leave me in this state with this tear trying to tear me up. Hallelujah. You're not going to pull me up from my roots. You're not going to pull me up from what I believe. You're not going to pull me up. I got a testimony. And I'm a living one. Point at yourself say, I'm a living one. Come on. Yeah! I ain't going to let no tear kill me. I'm a living one. I am a quickening spirit. Come on, share. Living testimony. Hallelujah. Brother Terry living testimony nothing don't let nothing pull your roots up don't let nothing be planted in you cause you to doubt your God pull down every stronghold and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God it's too much at stake your soul lives forever it's too much at stake Everything that we're living now is temporary. Our soul is eternal. It's too much at stake. Open up your mouth. Tell your soul it's too much at stake. Come on, over your personal life. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about the things that you, you got. You, it's a hard decision that could be made, but you, 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 you need to say, Lord, give me strategy. Because it's too much at stake. It's too much at stake. It's too much at stake. Oh, Rema Satabohayas. It's too much at stake. I remember we were having the hardest time of our life. And, and, and we just wanted to give up. And we was living in that big house. And we kept on saying we need to move and we, we need to do this. We were so pressed out of measure. Because of the tears that had tried to kill us chewing but we were still standing and the only reason why we didn't do it was because every morning we would wake up and see Kaylin Turner and we would say we gotta stay here until he gets settled and we stayed there until he went in the military because we didn't want him to be subject to all of the damage but lo and behold we didn't have foresight but God had already worked it out oh come on and give him praise we, we just thought it was going to tear our whole house down dismantle the whole house but he went out in the military and we said no we got to provide this stability for him I don't care if I owe $20,000 when I leave here I don't care if my credit get messed up. I'm doing it for him. He would have never known. So there are some things that the Lord does in our life. And there are some things in our life that we need to do. To make sure. To prevent further damage. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Too much is at stake. There's old saying, why are you trying to figure it out? When God had already worked this thing out, glory be to God. 
Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't back up. Don't give in. God got this thing already worked out. Come on. Hallelujah. My God. That, that's stress relief right there to know. Come on. That God already. He knows the end from the beginning. He's the first and last beginning and the end and forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, thank you for the release of your word in this house. My God, thank you. And Father, you allowed the tares to grow with the wheat. Because in all essence, the tares gave strength to the wheat. And even though it covered the ground where other wheat could have been, but the wheat that did remain got stronger. Glory be to God. But I think that when you begin to separate, the Bible says, Lord, you sent the servants to first not pull up the wheat, but pull up the tares. Glory be to God. Get them out of the way. Hallelujah. And separate them and bundle them up and throw them into the fire. But God, the wheat you said, Lord, to, to gather them and put them in the barn. I want to, God, pray for those, Lord, that have been going through a, 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 a terror-like situation. Whether the stuff around them, God, had been getting on their nerves and, and rubbing them wrong. Oh, God, but we know, Father, sometimes we need a little rubbing and we need a little sandpaper. We need a little, a little, little something to rub us, God, to make us, God, what we should be in the name of Jesus. But we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up against us, God, we shall condemn in judgment. But give someone hope today through the word, O oh Lord, to understand, God, that you know how things are going to turn out before they even, God, make it to the end. You know the beginning, God, from the end, O oh Lord, the end from the beginning. Thank you, Father, for this word today. Now bless the woman of God and restore her and replenish, O oh Father. God, allow her to load her guns up again. Glory be to God, because we fight a devil that, my God, that go about seeking whom he may devour. But God, we got a word today to know, Father. Hallelujah, God, that we shall be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you for the word. Strengthen some leader today, some minister, God, some, some person that's been on the battlefield, some person, Father, my God, that's been sowing good seed. But, Father, you said, Lord, hallelujah, we may sow in tears, but we're going to reap in joy. Glory be to God. We are doubtless come again, bringing in our harvest, bringing in our sheaves. Thank you, God, today. Hallelujah. We bless you. Bless them, God. Hallelujah. To stay in the race. Don't give up. Hallelujah, my for weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you shall reap it. You faint not. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. Clap your hands and love the Lord. Give God praise and honor in this house. Hallelujah. Look at somebody says, "Too much at stake for me to quit right now." God bless you. Enjoy your day. Amen. Remember Tuesday night, we'll be right back. Amen. At 6 o'clock to do the recap of what was preached on today. We love you. Thank God. It's Sister Judy is here today. Happy birthday to your birthday. Amen. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
It's a battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace, it's great to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Microwave made straight, finish line. It's a battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace, it's great to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Microwave made straight, finish line. No more struggle in my life, I'll survive. No more lack, no more pride. Jesus in my life, take my life to higher heights. Keep joy and fight. God, he knows, he'll get it right. As I seek the Lord, the Lord is fight. Though we may weep and cry at night, God is worthy, for he heard me. When I was sinking in sin, he didn't desert me. In my sin, he told me, grab a pen and pat and release what's down within your soul. Cause God, he knows, our ups and our downs and which way we go. And life through our strife, through our dramas, our pain. That's why I remain in the flock of the Lord. When things get strange, I call on his name. It's a battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace and strength to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Breakaways made straight, finish line. I'm also battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace and strength to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Breakaways made straight, finish line. I'm on the side of the Lord, I'm like a tycoon. All up in the devil's camp, and I'm coming soon. Soon to spread the message of the Lord in the pack room. All the people, we gon' get it, and he's coming soon. People don't move, spirit coming down in the room. God took my life, turned it around when I was doomed. Now I'm in the spirit, and the Holy Ghost making moves in my life. I'm God's gift, and I'm God's tool. And I came to spread this word to you. If it went for the blood, what would we do? Eyes on the prize, now looking back. I gave him a tenth, and he gave it back. His grace and mercy is new as a fact. That's why I praise, I praise him like that. Cause Jesus, he came, he came for the lame. He changed my life and I ain't the same. It's a battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace and strength to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Breakaways made straight, finish line. It's a battle in life, so I'll survive. God give me grace and strength to stay alive. Jesus is pleading my case till I arrive. Breakaways made straight, finish line. I said my truth here with grace straight. Finish line.